You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is not for as little as $5. You can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Well, excuse me, anyway, y'all. Also, I'm thinking of uh, putting up YouTube, uh, channel, what is it, channel memberships. And for those of you who don't want to join our Patreon, you can do uh, channel memberships and we can have just the same reward tiers and such and little customized icons for chats and everything. So, anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Okay. As well as a good chunk of the males, too, if that's more your thing. The Falcon puts his talons on his face to cover it. And I can hear a whimpering sound of embarrassment coming from his beak. Well, Eloi, you've had your fun. If you keep it up, you'll end up breaking him. Fortunately for a cat, a distraction soon arrives in the form of an almost naked lizard holding a full cup in each paw. I quickly grab the one offered to me while Tenex stuffs the other one into a cat's fingers and the bird almost jumps in surprise. Tenok? Hey, boys. I saw you two standing in the corner without any drink. I just had to remedy the situation. And thank you for that. I was trying to help the cat relax, and I'm sure this will help. Was this really your way of trying to relax me? Okay, okay, maybe I was having fun too. A little bit. But I was serious. Let yourself go and have fun. That's what we're here for. Then I brings his tail back in front of him, and I can see that the end of it is wrapped around the third cup that he is taking between his fingers. I didn't know it was prehensile. I wonder what else he can do. No, no, Eloi. Let's focus. This is not the time. I can only agree. Let's drink to parties and having fun. He raises his glass. I join him and am pleased to see a cat do the same on his side. In unison, we take a sip to quench our thirst. However, as soon as the liquid touches my tongue, I realize that something is not right. Whatever is in my cup, it is clearly not beer. What I'm drinking is much sweeter and spicier and absolutely delicious. Gulping it down as quickly as I usually do with my spirits would almost seem like an insult here. I, may, I meet a cat's gaze, and he is just as surprised as I am. That's reassuring. At least I'm not the only one who finds it strange. He turns abruptly to Tenak, waving the cup in front of him. Where did you get that Nate? Where did you get the, that Nadi? Where the notes? Oh, notes. That's right. Nadi. Okay. Everything from a cod is bad. And is proof of that. The best wine I've ever had the chance to taste. Ket seems to like it very, very, very much. All right. That what? Personal stash. Uh, nice to see someone who is able to appreciate it at its true value. I've got a barrel of it hidden near the bathhouse entrance if you want a refill, but don't tell anyone. An entire barrel? A single bottle costs a fortune. How could you get a whole barrel? Do I have to remind you of who I am, little birdie? The cat opens his beak as if to answer before finally falling silent. What's going on here? I feel like I'm missing some vital information. Wait, both of you, I want to be included in this conversation. I need to understand. Explanations. Now. The two males turn to me with a surprised look on their faces. Did they... Did they forget I was here? I'm going to start getting really irritated. Oh, sorry, Louis. It's just... Well, then I just gave us some Nadi. And what's Nadi? It's the best wine in Makad. The only one whose production doesn't involve slaves. It is worth a lot of money. No, you're exaggerating a bit. I wanted to sell my loot to be able to buy a single bottle. What? And you have a whole barrel of it? Once again, you all seem to forget who I am. Ambassador of Kazal, remember? The Emperor would let me come here without any resource wouldn't let me come here without any resources. And the Emperor gave you money to buy alcohol? Tenek seems to hesitate briefly before looking away. Maybe I didn't tell him about this particular purchase. Well well well, looks like the Ambassador is, uh, is hiding secrets from his country. In the end everyone has their little secrets. And let me guess, this purchase was absolutely mandatory for your duties and absolutely not for trying to impress at parties? I'll have you know that I don't need this to impress anyone. It's just a little help. Offering alcohol to people is one of the most powerful tools of diplomacy it's known. I'm pretty sure a bottle would have been enough for, enough for that. So, all of a sudden, when, it to, when, it's, when it's to make fun of me, this, this is black. This one knows how to speak. The power of alcohol, I guess? And Ket gives Tenek an amused smile, an amused look while I stand there, dumbfounded to see him respond to the Lizard with such panache. Second y'all. It is Walter time. Hmm. Delicious Walter. 
All right. If it's really something, if it's really because he's been drinking, I'll have to offer him wine more often. Seeing him grow in confidence like that is a sight I can enjoy. Anyway, if your goal is to impress me, know that it doesn't work. Throwing money at me is not the way you get into my pants. I'm worth more than any than money can buy. I would even dare to say you're overpriced. But anyway, I've already found two lovely ladies ready to explore the mysteries of Kazal tonight. I'm afraid a little game of cat and mouse will have to wait. Ladies, I expect turn out to play on both sides. I guess he's the kind of guy who likes to explore every possibility. However, before I can ponder that idea, a soft, crystal clear voice echoes through the courtyard. Good evening. I require your attention for a brief moment. Oh! Ugh. On the stage now is a poodle, dressed in a beautiful gown and jewelry probably worth a good fortune. What's all this about? What's all this about? She's clearly a noble. Besides, she looks quite familiar. I'm absolutely certain I've seen her somewhere before. First of all, I wanted to say that I appreciate your enthusiasm. I don't doubt for a second that we have the best our country has to offer in this courtyard. However, I am afraid I must ask you to kindly withdraw from the contest organized by our leaders in the interest of the kingdom. What? What'd she just say? I'm not the only one who was confused. Whispers and yells of indignation are heard in the crowd. Finally, Poodle raises her paws to ask for calm. Quiet, please. Again, this is in no way an insult to your talents. As I told you, this is purely for the sake of our wonderful nation. You know what people think of our kingdom outside of our borders. We are seen as savages and barbarians. Having a drunkard partygoer as a representative of our arts can only reinforce this opinion of us. I ask you to let someone of higher pedigree take that mantle. Who the fuck does she think she is? I feel the rage boiling inside me. I almost want to get up on stage and slap this idiot. Oh, she does more than thinking. She is a noble. And she's not entirely wrong. Excuse me? I thought I heard you'd agree with her, but I must be wrong because that's a ridiculous idea. I don't like the way she puts it, but she's right about one thing. Your reputation abroad is not exactly positive, to put it mildly. I'm sure it's not that bad, right, Akat? I turn to the Falcon, hoping for support from him, but all I get is a sorry look. I'm afraid it is, unfortunately. You, you're often made fun of, Eloise. This is strangely disturbing. I knew that we were often considered more barbaric than our neighbors, but I didn't think we were so badly regarded. However, that doesn't justify her behavior. Whatever she believes, she has no reason to talk to us like that. I am simply asking you to step down. I am entering the competition myself, and I will win. I am currently offering you an opportunity to leave without having to experience the humiliation of defeat. Ah, that's a good one. You're just hoping to get rid of the competition without having to fight for it, aren't you? They have to do better than that. Poodle turns to the person who spoke and offers a condescending smirk, almost like an adult would smile at a child who asks a silly question. For my part, I'm waiting to see what happens. Something's not right. I don't like it. I was clearly expecting that kind of remark. I guess that is the impression I could leave. Perhaps actions will speak louder than words. Would a demonstration satisfy you? Without waiting for an answer, she raises her left arm and a soft bluish light shines through her dress. She just activated her brand. She exhales deeply and steam escapes from her lips. Around her snow, where now around her snowflakes slowly appear, and a couple of shards of ice form in the air. A brand of fury. I guess she uses it to put on a show while she sings. I've seen it used that way a few times. Nothing too impressive. The ice forms an arch over her head and sparkles slightly when a light sh light source shines upon it. It's as if we were suddenly thrown into a cave full of gems. And finally, the poodle begins to sing. From the first note, I understand that she wasn't kidding. Damn, she's really, really good. She doesn't pick the simplest song either. Take it now, water time. Hmm. Oh, that's good. It's a religious chant with no lyrics, one of the most complex in this kind of repertoire, and she's mastered it perfectly. The goal is to convey an emotion that can reach the whole world, whether you speak a language or not, so the song relies entirely on the singer's technique. She manages to vary the bass and treble with surprising virtuosity without it ever sounding false. It's impossible to find the slightest fault in her, with her performance, and on top of that, she managed to do it all while controlling her brand. As the song progresses, I feel anger rush through me. If you can sing this well and you think you can win, what was that garbage speech? Just show your talent, prove to others that you are better than them, and win that way, not by telling them to go away and give it all up. Respect your colleagues. As if to rub it in, the songstress finishes on a note so high that it causes the ice all around her to vibrate, eventually causing it to shatter into a shower of droplets. If it weren't so furious, the show would probably be stunning. But absolute silence follows her performance. Good, I think you can leave now. Think about what I've just told you and enjoy your little party. 
Uh, waiting for a response, she elegantly steps off the stage. Well, I feel like I can hear my teeth cracking under the force with, forth, force with which, force with which, while I clench my jaw. There's absolutely no way I'm letting her get away with this. The cat on stage now. What? Now. I, I don't give the bird time to answer me. I just move as quickly as I can towards the table serving as a stage. If that bitch thinks I'm going to let her go like that, she's in for a big surprise. I jump on one of the tables, and once I'm up, I slip two fingers between my lips and let out a high-pitched and sonorous whistle as I can. I, too, know how to attract attention. Excuse me, missus. I feel a lie swivel toward me, but right now I'm the only one interested. The only one I'm interested is hers. I'm satisfied to see her turn around and give me a surprised look. What I didn't expect was to see it immediately replaced by a deep, intense hatred. Obviously, while well, I can't figure out where I know her from, she does remember me. I wait to know why, but for now, that's not my problem. I have to put her in her place first, and it starts with a clap, slow and steady. Congratulations! I have to say, really, this has to be one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard. Absolutely perfect, not the slightest flaw. Well, maybe one, a tiny, mini little detail. It also has to be one of the most boring songs I've ever heard. It's all very nice, but we're at a party. We're not here to listen to a religious choir. We're here to dance, drink, and have fun. In short, we're here to pay tribute to life itself. So next time, try to choose a song that is appropriate for the situation. But surely, as you said yourself, actions speak louder than words. Would a demonstration satisfy you? The weird noise. Out of the corner of my eye, I see that a cat has joined me on stage, and I thank the gods for that. I then turn to a group of musicians not far away, who should have been the first to play on the stage before all this drama. We're gonna need help with the music. Do you mind? Just follow the beat of my musician to make sure everyone is a blast. That seems to snap them out of the torpor the poodle's performance has put them in, and they nod their heads before joining us on stage. I then turn to a cat. Small change of plan. We're gonna show her how to have fun. Remember that pirate song we worked on? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, Birdie. It's gonna be okay. Let's shake this castle. I then turn back to the crowd, my best smile displayed on my face. Now it's time to do what I do best. You know, you get to hear a lot of sea shanties in the coastal taverns. These folks rarely put their paws on land, and when they do, it's to party like their lives depend on it. Believe me, it's glorious to behold. So why not borrow one of their songs? Dear friends, let me sing you the story of Gregor. Did I choose a vulgar song on purpose? Absolutely. Is it just to make fun of that noble <laughs> Obviously. With a sigh, a cat begins to play, quickly joined by the other musicians, and I mentally thank him for not hesitating any longer. Second, y'all. It is water time. All right, y'all, here we go. The song has started. I'll tell you a tale of a man who would sail across seas in search of a quest. His name was Gregor, and he had much fervor. He wasn't clever, nor was he the best. Prepared for the trip, Gregor met a large ship. He entered without his, faith, his faithful crew. He wanted glory, a nice little story, but found an orgy and yelled, They screw! Yo ho, matey, there was no lady. When misfortune strikes, we drink to the health of Gregor the unlucky, who found no money, far into the sea, now to his wealth. Well, fleeing the ship, he lost all his <laughs> He lost all his shit. He lost all his shit. His pants slid to the ground in this race. No delay, Gregor went away, dismayed, displaced on his displayed on his face. And in the distance, Gregor saw his existence as a king and emperor of his own poems. Free like animals, without manacles, he met cannibals praying to totems. Yo, ho, oh, matey, they felt pretty killy. If misfortune strikes, we drink to the health. Gregor the Unlucky, who could end up bloody, it's not very funky now to his wealth. His end was near, but Gregor turned his rear, his wonder where Lucy suddenly stopped, with the poor captain who had nothing to bargain, but now, hearken, out came his cock! The tribe was in awe, such was their law, the pillar of flesh was standing strong, the, the sacred idol, the one of their ideal. One of their ideal, they weren't homicidal in front of the schlo- <laughs> What the fuck is this song? Yo ho, matey, now that was lucky. And when fortune, when fortune strikes, we drink to the health of Gregor the Big Dick, who stopped the conflict. Only with his prick, now to his wealth. I have the immense pleasure of seeing the crowd in front of me become more and more animated as I go through the song, which only motivates me to give more energy to each of my words. 
I danced between verses and spin around on the stage to encourage the audience to follow me as I merrily hopped towards the musicians to playfully circle them. And that's when I realized that's also why I hated this poodle's singing. It is technically perfect, far more than I will ever be able to do, but it lacks life, joy, and movement. It lacks everything that makes me so thrilled to be on stage. I finish the song by bowing to the crowd and hear applause and shouts of joy. It seems like the party has come alive again. I raise my muzzle to give the songstress an amused look. I truly hope that this song was not too barbaric and vulgar for your taste, lady. After all, I'm just a drunk I'm just a drunkard party goer. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Sorry, my line delivery was quite a bit off. It's a little harder to know the lyrics of a song when they're literally being spelled out in front of you as you're reading. So, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!